Okay, Shobhi, uh, what you have done, the previous day? Uh, so last day we finished with uh, that uh, super keyword and also I think we did last thing we did super keyword and also overloading and let me just check overriding overriding we have done uh, we, we, we did that in previous class also last thing we did the super keyword and the final key and also the instant insert. Okay. We are just, we are starting the interface. Yeah. Okay, we have done the instant initializer block. Find yeah, just also done. Yeah, polymorphism also done. Okay, polymorphism. Okay. So what is polymorphism? Again, just remind the please. Uh, polymorphism can be termed as uh, it's a uh, it's a oops concept. That can two, be two keyword poly and morphism. Poly uh, poly means many. Uh, morphism means uh, that forms. Yeah, many forms. Sir, many forms, yes. And also we can use it for method overriding and method overriding. Yeah, Overloading and, and overriding. Yeah. There are two types of polymers. One is runtime and another is compiling. So now what is runtime polymorphism? Runtime polymorphism or dynamic method dispatch is a process in which a call the overriding method is sort of runtime. So that method uh, is one type of uh, polymorphism type that process in the runtime. But the compile type polymorphism is what? Compile type polymorphism is just to resolve the polymorphism in the compile type. That's why it is called compile type polymorphism. In that, in that runtime polymorphism, an overridden method, just like the inheritance, an overridden method is called. So the reference variable of a super class. Okay, just one policy study. Okay, so again, let's start with the uh, random polymorphism example. And after that, we have done the dynamic binding and instance of a part. Okay, let's start Java runtime polymorphism example with shape. Shape means suppose you have done the mathematics of triangle, circle, rectangle, that kind of shape. In the runtime polymorphism shape example. Yeah, uh, so we share this one. So other skins. Uh, so the host is disabled. Oh. Yes, now.
Yeah, we are just taking the glass shape with that taken uh, white draw and then printing the statement drawing. And then again, just taking another child class rectangle, rectangle extends the print class shape and white draw. This is drawing rectangle. After that, taking the circle class and drawing circle. After taking the triangle class, then drawing triangle. Then after taking the main class, test polygons in group. And then main method and after that. So this is an example of overriding, right? Yeah, because uh, every time your method is same. Yeah. Draw method. Now then create the object, the A subject, then after that. And after uh, is the draw is the draw three times the method is called. The draw method is called three times and S is the object. Then three steps into so we can use same object for three different classes. Yes, yes, we can do that. Or we can do another uh, another three different different objects also. Now, uh, now our archive polymer is some with data. That is the exam below data. Data means nothing. This what kind of methodical calculation? The example. Yeah. This is the example of never runtime data member. What is data member? A method is overridden here, not a method is overridden but not data members. Runtime, so runtime polymorphism here cannot be achieved by data members. Actually, here what should happen? Uh, both the classes have a data member speed limit. Just see, one is 90, another is hmm. 150. Both the classes have a data member speed limit. And we are accessing the data member by the reference variable of parameters. And variable means your speed limit. Speed limit is the variable of parameters which refer to the subclass object. And since we are accessing the data member which is not overwritten, it will access the data member of the parent class always. So basically, uh, all the property of parameters come to the challenges. Parent, uh, object or uh, uh, data member of the reference variable of parent class come to the challenges. That is the meaning of data member. Data member is nothing. It is one one data member of the first class is 90, another data member is, is one. The speed limit is the variable. Uh, so what is the question of this program and this is not so clear uh, it is data mm -hmm. member actually suppose you have taken uh, it is runtime polymorphism runtime polymorphism means that in many ways you can define that my speed limit is 90 so this is the one of the way that is called runtime polymorphism. In the this method, which is the actually compiler solved the thing, which is ninety or one fifty, which statement should be printed. Yeah. So that is the one way to print the speed limit ninety. That is called uh, polymorphism. I mean in the runtime. 
And here speed limit is the, we have taken the speed limit as the data. That's why it's fine. Example of random volume is with data memory. Now, next Java uh, runtime polymorphism with multi level inheritance. We have done the data member now. Runtime polymorphism with multi level inheritance. Multi level means there are so many child classes. So, all the child classes are made from the parent class. So, that is basically what multi level inheritance is. It is also runtime uh, polymorphism. Yeah, right? it is runtime polymorphism. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it is also runtime polymorphism and it is runtime polymorphism with multi level inputs. Yeah. Because there are uh, two subclass, eek and uh, dog and baby two. And parent class is animal, so it is a multi level in class. More than one class, more than one uh, subclass extend the parent class. Okay, I'll this example. Yes, kind of. Yeah, here yeah, uh, I have taken class animal, then eating. After that, I have taken the one child class that is dog, and that dog extends animal and eating foods. It will eat. And after that, Again, another child class which is extend the previous child class, which is extend previous. So basically, what will happen? Basically, your uh, first of all, our uh, main, main parent class is animal, but now our main class is main parent class is dog. That's why class baby dog extends dog, and why to eat will be the uh, method. So and these are all examples of runtime polymorphism, right? Yeah, runtime polymorphism. Uh, runtime polymorphism with multi-level inheritance. Yeah, multi-level inheritance. I'm seeing that. Uh, so when does compile term polymorphism happen? Yeah, then we will come next. Okay. And after that, you want to and a three uh, the three object with it, and then. Actually, you have done already. You have done the compile type polymorphism. Can you tell me which example you have done? Right, That's why I cannot tell you. 
for your understanding. Okay, there are two types of polynomials, right? One is runtime yeah, yeah. and another is compiled. Compiled. Yeah, runtime polynomials are you have done runtime with data member, runtime with variable units, but the compiled time. What is the compiled time polynomial? Now come. That only I was asking. What is compiled? Yeah, compiled time polynomials means this thing. Compiled time polynomials means when the problem is resolved in the compiled time. That is the compiled time polynomials. So there are so many ways of compiling polynomials. So we, we have already done actually. Compile times polymorphism implemented through method overloading and method overriding. Method overloading and operator overloading. And runtime polymorphism is implemented through method overriding. And yeah. method overloading we have already done. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. now we do operator overloading, but method overloading we already and method overriding happened. In the runtime polynomials. Right? Mm. So just remember one node, runtime polynomials is implemented through method override. But compile time polymorphism is implemented through method overloading. And compile time polymorphism is also known as static polymorphism or early binding. So in interviewers say that what is early binding to just you know, is the definition of uh, compiling polymer. Basically, the what is the input is there, you just write the code, and in the compile time, when the compilation process happens, then the, this compiling polymer process will be executed. That's why we call it the polymorphism, but which time the compile time? When we actually run the program. And compiling polymorphism, we are uh, executing through method overloading and operator overloading. And runtime is going to uh, method overloading. Now, uh, what is operator overloading? There is one way we can uh, do method, uh, method overloading, and another way to do compiling time polymorphism is operator overloading. Okay, just I am giving you that note. Okay, I'll use the note anti polymorphism and operator polymorphism. Uh, sir, can you send this in the WhatsApp group so I can keep okay. see it after this? Yeah, I have patient hearts. <laughs> okay, now come to the uh, operator overloading. Okay, what is operator overloading? <laughs> operator is said to be overloaded if it can be used to perform more than one function. Overloading means what? Overloading means suppose overload. Suppose our uh, if the current is overload, then fuse will go. That is kind of thing. If the more than one function will happen, then the operator is overload. That is called overloading. If the one 
if the more than one function will happen simultaneously, then our operator is simply overloaded. Now let's start with one example. Simply better analysis. Yeah, that is the operator overloading result for resolve the problem of combined time polynomials. Yeah, that is the function for adding two integers. Suppose I have taken add method integer a and b. Then some a plus b, some is the variable. And then I send the two integers. Now, function of concatenating two strings string one plus str h1 plus h2. So, str is the variable. Actually, here, uh, two number will be three, two and this, actually, it will be two and three, two number will be sub. Uh, and but string will be sub. Yeah, then. yeah, but this is like method overloading, right? Why? It is said operator only. Yeah, operator means there is it is one kind of operator. That's why it's called operator only. That plus operator. Okay. That's why it's a it's one kind of method overloading, but it is more yeah. specifically it will say another way. Then that is the polymorphism. In a different different way we can achieve the same thing. That is the polymorphism. <coughs> this is the, this is the hmm. cal calculation. This is the uh, Increment, sorry, not increment, it is the class of item, addition of item. After, and after that, it is the next is concatenating the string. Concatenating the integrate of the two string. <coughs> and then 10 and 10 plus 2 equals to 12, addition of 2 integrate. Okay, well, next is what is the <coughs> advantage of compatible polymer? Uh, compatible polymer. So I guess the time complexity is less. That is the one thing. And another thing is it improves the code clarity and allows for the okay. use of the single name for similar process. It improves the code clarity to the developer. And it has a flexible execution time. Is that you are uh, that is the one kind of very fast process when you just click the run button and it will show the and the compilation on the compilation process uh, have that so it is the most faster execution process in compiled volumes and and it improves more clarity <laughs> And compound and one only disadvantage of compounding polymorphism is it does not improve the inheritance. Yeah. Because in compounding polymorphism, the inheritance it cannot be done. It cannot be done because it is method over. Yeah. yeah. And the method overriding just done in the runtime polymorphism, not here.
So that is the biggest mistake, uh, biggest disadvantage that inheritance is not applied. So that is the one kind of uh, difference of compatible and polymers. And commonly polymerism is called static binding, and anti polymerism is called dynamic binding. And this polymerism is done in compile time, and this polymerism is done in runtime. This is the one kind of difference. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and this compile time polymerism is achieved through the method overloading and operator overloading. And runtime polymerism is achieved through <coughs> method overloading. That is another difference. Just same thing in the difference. Yeah, I am sending it once. Yeah. Yeah, it's same. And we have told that right, the difference between inheritance and polymer. Yes, sir. The, the difference between inheritance and polymers. So we have just told in the previous. Inheritance and polymorphism. Yeah. Polymorphism we can also achieve by without inheritance. And inheritance requires I mean they are totally different things, right? Inheritance and polymorphism. Hmm. Inheritance and polymorphism. And we can do method overriding using inheritance. Yeah, but the uh, we cannot do, yeah, yeah, cannot do overloading. Mm -hmm. so, uh, what more? That is the main difference I can think of. Mm -hmm. That is the main difference. That is also the uh, so that is also the static binding and dynamic binding. Static binding also known as early binding and dynamic binding also known as late binding. So basically, static binding and dynamic binding is nothing. Compile time polymorphism and runtime polymorphism. In the interview, say what is static difference between two binding? Then it's nothing but the uh, two polymorphism. Okay, now come to the instance of next is instance of upper. It's an instance of. What is instance of operator? The Java instance of operator used to test whether the object is an instance of the specimen. So it's all kind of operator that actually check check the condition whether the object is an instance. Suppose you're taking the object of a class or instance, then that object is, then what is the type of that object? Whether the object is an instance of a specified type. 
it is the really the object of that class or not? That is the that is the condition and that is checked by the instance of a committee. And that is one kind of condition. So it is basically uh, it is true or false. The uh, output is like a boolean of boolean of condition class. Yeah, it is true. Yeah, see, instance of animal. So it is checking that D is really the object of animal to uh, The dog one is already extreme animal to the dog one is child plus animal to is end plus. So it is checking the is really the instance of the object. That is called the initial animal. That is the condition and it is true. Now, initial stop in Java with a variable that have null value. So that value is not. Yeah, uh, should I make a new file or yeah you can no it is better uh, today's uh let me hold that Yeah, it will uh, pause. This is the null value. That's mm Then come to the next. Now downcast. Downcast is Java instance of operator. Okay, what is downcasting? First of all, when subclass type refer to the object of the parent class, that is called downcast. Then the upcasting and downcast. Downcasting is when uh, subclass type. That is, you will have parent class and subclass. That subclass type refers to the object of the parent class. When the creation of the object, you just see that line. That's called downcast. It's like super cute. No, no, not super cute. You know, when you create the object, hmm. when you create the animal class, and suppose your uh, subclass is dog. So dog D equals to new animal. That we have taken. And that line, that line is called the downcast. This the object of the subclass, the subclass type refer to the object of the parent class. There's no downcast.
is an example of uh, yeah. Um, just... Yeah, that one statement, okay, I'm just in part is kind of thing. Yeah, just see, uh, we're just adding on some problem. Error exists. But I think uh, this uh, this name is same. Right. Yeah, the name is same with the PBS example. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the parent is animal food and your child is dog. So how did it happen? It is a dynamic down custom block 3D. The D is the object. That object of <coughs> 3D equals to dog 3A. That means the child class referred to the object of the parent class. That is the meaning of the line number eight. That is called down custom. And then main method and after the animal for A it was new dog. So A is the one, A is the object of the parent class. Animal for A is new dog three and dog three was method. So the child, the object of the parent class is referred by what? Referred by the child class. Object of okay, the parent but... class referred by the child class. That is down test. Okay. Okay, and that is the interface actually. Another example of down custom and instance of property. So just make one interface, then after that we will come for this interface. Uh, should I create a new interface right now? Yeah, interface. Hello. Yes, tell me. Sir, this program is to put again a sort of yeah, I can yeah, just tell me again. Hello, tell me again. Sir, this line, why are you using previous okay. programs? Which line? Sir, this line, if A is the instance of dog 3, dog 3, D is equal to Yeah, it is, the, it is showing the condition of down dust. If A instance of dog 3 means A is the, in, the instance of dog 3. What is dog 3? So dog 3 is child class and A is the object of the parent class. So that's why if the parent class object is the referred by what? Referred by dog 3. Dog 3 means the child class. If the parent class object is defined by the child class, then it is called dog dust. So that's why we are using one if loop and after that in the if loop we are uh, putting the condition okay. and then downcasting happened so that okay downcasting so 
sir the down casting using that time then we will using the this line if physical instance of dog tree yeah if it is some kind of instance of operator with down casting it is a both the mixture oh. exactly okay okay so much is a new interface model. And now give, give the interface name. Yeah, now based on What can you say? Yeah, just give any interface name. Interface, uh, you just give it. Yeah, interface. Yeah, yeah now, yeah, now write the book. Any program? No, no. I'm just sending in the yeah, okay, chat okay. box. I have sent them. Okay. I need to change the name. Oh, when I compile, should the name automatically change? Yeah. No, it's class A implements. The class name is different. Uh, let me do it from first. Hmm, it is not an issue. I think. And class B. Yeah, I think it should be test for because the main method is here. Right? Mm. That will be carried to another class. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, I mean the test for also carried to another final class. Okay. okay. I think it is mixed up, that's why it is. Uh, you know, yeah, it is getting mixed up. That's for let me check. No, so there is no other test for. Just let me create a new file, right? So only showing B method. B method. Yeah. Yeah, then the after is B method, is that right? yeah. Let's see the uh, actually it is the real use of the instance of keyword. Okay, so here what will happen? You have taken the interface as for uh, printable interface. Okay. Now after taking the class, let's put A, class A implements printable. Because we have taken the interface, that's why we cannot use the interface, cannot use extends, we use implements. Then public void A, A method, and then after the class B implements printable, after that B method. So we are creating two methods, void A and void B. Yeah. Then class call, then making one void and making one method void invoke. 
it's up casting printable. And we are using also up casting and down casting. P if putting the condition P instance of A. P is the content of object, P is instance of A. A means okay. it is the parent class. So the it is saying that it is saying the down casting the object of the parent class is referred by the child class. And a dot method for calling method calling a dot it after that another down testing happened in in second the b section if p instance of b then bb equals to bp it is also round testing and b dot b is the calling the b method after that we have taken another main class class test code and then creating the object p and c printable p equals to new b and all c equals to new b and then the invoke method will be called. Then B method will be uh, B method is the output. So then what is interface? I mean what is the difference from class? Yeah, that I am coming in the next next topic. Okay. Yeah. Now in the next topic is first of all we have to understand what is abstract things. Of, uh, abstract class and normal class. We have uh, already have learned the normal class because we have taken public class A, B, C, D, whatever. That is a normal class. Now, we are just taking the abstract class. So now, what is abstract class? A class which is declared with the abstract keyword. Suppose I am writing one class that's called public abstract, public abstract class A. So the abstract here will be used public abstract class A. So that A is the abstract class. If I mention the class abstract, then the class will be abstract. Okay. It can and then the abstract class have two type of methods. Abstract method and non-abstract method. Non-abstract method means suppose you are just writing normal method, public void. That is the non-abstract method. And what is the abstract method? Public void abstract method. That is the abstract method. A non abstract method and abstract method. And abstract, and now come another question. What is abstract method? What is abstract method? We are going through abstract class, but inside the abstract class, we are creating the abstract method. Then what is abstract method? Abstract method is the method without the word. There is nothing in uh, the method, method without the Empty, empty Okay. The method without the empty body is an abstract. Non-abstract method means inside the method you uh, write some code, you write some block, mm -hmm. and then you print something. And abstract method is not. There is uh, one empty method. That's called abstract method. So in the abstract class, there are two types of methods. One is abstract method and another is non-abstract method. Now come next. Uh, what is abstract? What is abstraction? Abstraction is a process of hiding. It is the another rules concept. It is called abstraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abstraction is a process of hiding the implementation details and showing only the functionality to the user, user or developer. Yeah. It actually it hides the internal details. So suppose, uh, suppose you uh, you are writing one uh, by. You just see what you just see you riding the bike and the bike is moving from one place to another. Mm. But you cannot see the inner process of the bike. Inner process means what the how the oil is passing into the engine, how the clutch you will how the clutch will functioning. That mm. that you cannot that the rider cannot see. What the rider see if the rider see the bulky bike is moving just that is the main usage. But the main functionality cannot be seen. And that means that is the hiding actually. Mm -hmm. So that process is called abstract. The process of hiding the implementation details and only showing the functional to the user. And another example is that suppose uh, <laughs> sending SMS. Suppose you're writing one chat, mm. suppose you are putting chat in 
person that you what you see and your friends see that you just type on chat to them. But what is the internal process? How the message will come and go? That you cannot see. Mm -hmm. So that is the missing actress. That is the called abstraction. And ways to achieve abstraction. How many ways? <laughs> How many ways we can achieve the abstraction? There are two ways abstract class and another is called interface. There are two ways to achieve abstraction, that process. One is called abstract class and another is called interface. So abstract class we already know. We are using the abstract keyword in the class that is called abstract class. And interface is the more proper way. Interface is the more proper way to achieve the abstraction. But abstract class is the not the proper way. But yeah, we can do with the abstract class, but interface is the more proper way. So interviewer maybe ask you some that goes to that. What, what are the ways you, we can achieve the abstraction? So the answer is there are two ways, abstract class and interface. There are the two ways to achieve abstraction. <clears throat> an abstract class must be declared with an abstract queue. And that abstract class have abstract and not abstract both the method. It cannot be instantiated and it can be constructed and static messages also. Just we just see the example so we can better understand. First go to the example of abstract class and after that we go to the example of interface. And how uh, why we use interface? We use interface of the multiple inheritance. That's why here come the interface application. In, in general, Java cannot support the multiple inheritance because of the ambiguity process. So to remove the ambiguity, to remove the complexity of the code, to make easier the, to make easier the code, the interface will come. And that interface will, the interface will help the multiple inheritance and support it in Java. So that is the uh, biggest milestone of interface. That interface will help the multiple inheritance to, uh, to be radical in Java. Okay, so let's first of all start with the abstract class example with the abstract method. see this is the it has one abstract method and one abstract class Yeah, I didn't say to. You see, here in abstract class, byte, so the byte five is the abstract class. And what is the abstract method? Run. Abstract void run is the abstract method. After that, uh, class Honda code extend byte five. Here, this is the normal extension that we already see in the normal inheritance. 
then we have taken the normal class and under the normal class we have taken normal method that is called void and then print running simple <laughs> and then main method and then creating the object and after that the method will call so this is the uh, abstract class and abstract method itself so how it is working abstract class method Yeah, in abstract class, there are maybe there are two types of methods abstract void also, and uh, abstract method also, and non abstract methods. But in the normal class, you should have um, the normal method is void run. And that running safely. So that the process, that the abstract class, abstract void run, that method actually hiding the implementation. And then running safety will print. Actually, that the line number for abstract void run, whatever that is the abstract method, and that is the empty body method. And that is and that is absolutely hideable. That the user or the developer cannot see what is the inside it is. But the developer see what? But the developer see the void run, the normal method, and system not printed running set. Then running set will print after the creating the object. That is the way. Of doing the abstract, of doing the abstraction, hiding the implementation details and only showing the uh, functionality. Okay. Yeah, here basically actually abstract void none that will also hide that method. We cannot see inside how the uh, method will process. But the normal method, we can see how is the process. Okay, now, another example of uh, abstract this. Yeah, then no, no, that is the thing actually. We, okay. It is the extra class. You cannot inherit the extra class. That that shape is one kind of uh, extra class, right? And you are creating mm -hmm. the normal class rectangle. So how is the extra uh, properties of the extra class uh, class come to the normal class? That is not possible. That's it's like a the, final cure. <laughs> Uh, just like the final kit is one kind of say restriction. Yes, yes, kind yes. Of yeah, then the, the drawing rectangles cannot happen, but the circle one extends it. Yeah, it also not happen because could not find or load main class. No, it's because the class name is
that is another example of abstract class. But just remember, in, with the abstract class, we cannot fully achieve the abstraction. Maybe we achieve half, maybe we achieve 60%. <laughs> Can I do another example of abstract things? But uh, abstract class is being inherited here, right? Hello. Yeah, so let's see being inherited. The, go, to the, go to your first example. I think it is wrong something here. That rectangle. I think you have previously also do on rectangle example. Yeah, that's only yes. I think there are the similar classes. Let's As the same error type is no no just save save the class save the class. Yeah, error is not same but uh race at the same Is dot draw okay again just type is dot draw again in line number 17. Again, we can just create uh, calling the method is dot draw or creating uh, s1 and s2. That's why it is not coming. Creating the another object and creating okay. call the method. Mm, rectangle, right? Mm. So the uh, calling if you don't calling the method then it is not coming. <laughs> uh, this is also same program of Now come that goes to abstract uh, class. Now come interface, the another way of achieving the abstraction. And this is the most perfect way of abstraction of achieving the abstraction. Interface is nothing, interface is a blueprint of a class. 
it is a standing constant and abstract methods. Okay, now abstract class has abstract method also and normal abstract method also, but in interface, if you use the interface, there sh should be no normal method. In interface, there should only the abstract method. That is the reason. And that is also the major difference between the abstract class and interface. Now come, why use Java interface? So can you why use uh, Java interface? Uh, for more security purpose, I guess. Mm -hmm. for, for more accurately achieve the abstraction, that is the main thing. For loose coupling actually. And another is for support the multiple integrators. We can use interface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the another thing. Another main thing. come the example of interface and here we are just using now the extremes keyword for inheritance but we inherit the parent class but here using the in, using the interface we are using implementation implements implements keyword. Oh, same thing that I need as well. The type rectangle is already. Yeah, it is showing a uh, drawing set. Yeah, the same thing. Just same do thing, the yeah. new theory. The same. Let's get another object then. Uh, so just a minute, I, I will be back in one minute. Okay. Just a minute. Dollars. Yeah, right oh. side and drawing. That is the interface here. Interface drawable and then class rectangle 
one by implement star. That is the implement sphere we have used. Here, if you use the external sphere, then it will show it. Because we are using the inter, it's not the class. Hmm. And using the interface, the draw method in line number four, why draw that method is abstract. That is not the normal method. Yeah, yeah. everything will abstract. be abstract. Yeah. Isn't everything? Yeah. Under the interface, the, all the methods will be abstract. The empty body method. Okay, now question the multiple inherent is not supported through class in Java. That is the interview question. But it is not possible by an interface. But it is possible by an interface. Because if you using the multi uh, multiple inherent terms <coughs> cannot happen or cannot support it in Java because of the ambiguity. Ambiguity means the complexity. There are so many complexities. If you use the normal inheritance with the in the multiple events. but mm -hmm. in the interface with the interface uh, there will be no ambiguity and the implementation will be very easy and so that's why the multiple event is supported by interface that is what type of interview of question can come By in the Yeah, that is the question. Multiple is not supported to the class, but it's possible in terms. And now you another example of interface. Oh, the name. Mm. 27 minutes. Basically, it is the cube of x, and x is yes. what? x is 3. <laughs>
And that is the example of uh, static wind. Interface with static wind. This is static wind Q. Here we are taking the static variable int. Data term and variable Q. So it's a static Q. And then one is called that is called nested interface. What is nested interface? In the one interface is situated in the other interface. Just like the nested loop, nested for loop or nested for loop. This is the, this is the syntax actually. Interface printer, void printer, again interface message printer. <clears throat> so one interface is located in another interface. It's called nested, nested interface. Then the difference come. What is the difference between abstract class and interface? That I already told you. That okay. Now I'm sending that. Now I'm In this way, I'm going to call this one. Okay, now, yeah, okay, I have seen the, I'm sending the difference between. So you're not mentioning rectangle, right? Drawing rectangle in the program. It's showing in the output, uh, drawing rectangle 27. No, no, drawing rectangle in the, uh, because it's not, this is the, this is the kind of syntax, the nested interface syntax. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is the point. Yeah, drawing rectangle and the Q of three. That is uh, twenty seven. Understand me? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, just send in verse. <laughs> Uh, 
that is very important actually uh, the interview clearly tells what is the inter what is the difference between extra class and inter class okay now uh, come to encapsulation the next course concept is encapsulation that is the last course concept So, what is encapsulation? Encapsulation is like uh, hello. Yes. Uh, hello. Yes, tell me. Sir, encapsulation will be discussing day after tomorrow, no, sir. Then I will searching the Google, then easily will be understanding. Sir, uh, if you discuss on next day, what topic will you discuss and please inform it in the group. Then I will easily understand, uh, read the topics, then easily will you understand me, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, no, sir. Okay. Okay. Okay, what is encapsulation? Encapsulation means, suppose, uh, <laughs> just give the real time example. Suppose you have uh, one capsule that medicines and it, inside that capsule there are so many small small yeah, pulse type thing right in the inside the capsule small small just like whatever else that the ingredients small small, small uh, ingredients in the capsule in on medicine that ingredients will wrap up that ingredients will wrap up in a capsule and that capsule we can solve it with the water so that that uh, ingredients with the capsule that is the thing but that's the actually real life example that is the thing of encapsulation encapsulation means so many different things that is wrapping up in a single unit single unit means that one capsule one medicine capsule. There are so many vitamins, so many minerals they are inside the medicine. But what is the outside the medicine? Outside the medicine is the cap that capsule that we have uh, actually saw outside. Wrapping up. Of, so what is encapsulation? Encapsulation is uh, wrapping up of data in a single unit. Wrapping up of different type of data in a single unit. That is called encapsulation. It just uh, so we just stop the share and share. Yeah. Just see, this is the encapsulation wrapping up of data in a single unit. Actually, there is no uh, output, but this is the one type of syntax. This is the basically one syntax of encapsulation. Okay, first of all, I have taken one class that is the employee view. Employee view is my class. Okay. After that, I have taken private string employee. Private is the access specific, the package string employee. <coughs> After that, I have taken private string employee DPT. DPT means employee department employee ID and private law employment center. Employment service, employment center. So, employee ID, employee department, and employee center. Okay. The three uh, property but the attribute I have taken that is the string, that is also the string data type, and that is that salary is the long data type. And all the access specific will be private. That package, the package will be private. So after that, okay, just I am deleting this. I am deleting this thing. I am delete up to this. It is showing error. What is the error? Error is syn uh, syntax error. Complete class one. Okay. There is the <coughs> first of all we have taken three property how to make the encapsulation. 
this is the three property. These three, just like these three vital things actually. Employee ID, employee department, employee salary. These three, we can wrap up these three property to the one single unit. That object stored data and it is the mirror of database object. Okay. Employee ID, employee department, and employee salary. Then now we have to use the getters and setters method in encapsulation. Getters and setters method means what? Getter means from the database, suppose we have uh, you have one database. From the database, we can uh, get the data. In that case, we, you can use the get method. And what is the save method? Save method is you, if you just uh, that data, if you just print here that data that I have shown you in the previous day, that data with Java and database connectivity. If you show here uh, all the data you need your database, all the data will come here. That's the save method. We can save the data. In consume, in it is consumed. So that is the getters and setters method. Now we are using. So how we can use the getters and setters method in Eclipse? Just right click on this. Go to source. After that, just see general getters and setters. The one option already there. After that, they have taken <coughs> select getters and setters to create all the select to select all. That's it. Select all and then generate. Just see. You don't have to type anything. All the codes will automatically generate by the uh, software. That now see what will happen here. Public string get employee ID. That is the get. Getter method and setter method. Getter method and setter method. Getter method, setter method. The all the property for the employee ID, we are using getter method and setter method. For the employee department, we are using getter method and setter method. And for the employee salary, we are using getter method, get employee salary and set employee salary. So that is the getter and setter method we are using in that fashion. And after that, in the uh, set employee ID, we will pass in the parameter string employee ID. That, that, that the attribute. That the attributes we are passing. String into department and long impression. And this, this your employee salary equals to salary. This your employee department equals to employee department. And this your employee ID equals to employee. And this is the return type actually. The method return type that you already know. So this is the getters and setters. <coughs> After that, uh, we are also using the twisting method. In also in encapsulation. What is twisting method? Just right click on this source. See, generate two string. Click on this. All the three attributes. Yeah, select all and generate. See, public string, new string method will automatically create and return to employee view, employee ID, employee department, and employee self. That is the two string. So, one is get sets and another is two string. So, this is the total process of the encapsulation. So, wrapping up of data, wrapping up of data in a single unit. That is what in encapsulation. I'm just uh, giving you another example so you can understand. That's what I am giving the example of intersection.
Okay, first I'll give you the details and set this section. After that, I'm giving the printed statements in the main section. So this is basically the one program, but the first section I am given, this is the just getting one file and parts. yeah, there is a few parts. So let's share the screen. Yeah, share the screen. And just uh, create this and uh, another yeah, new file. Yes. <laughs> so the account number, name, email, and amount. The fourth uh, thing will be. Let's go to go to the first time. Right. Go to the first time. Yeah, just uh, remove from uh, line number eight. Yeah. Yeah, you can you yes, just sir. add uh, get some settings. Oh, I will remove all right. Yeah, remove and again add. Just I have shown you. Yeah. Uh, it's from source, right? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and that's and and get the twisting methods after the line number the line number thirty one actually. line number thirty the twisting now. <laughs> yeah. All of this, right? Uh, should I give for methods and related methods? No, no, just uh, just for properties. Yes. What does this override do? Uh, 
that is the uh, one kind of annotation for the right. Add the right over right. That is the that is the one kind of annotation. Okay, so that is the outcome of polymer film example. Hey, sorry. It's the eight calculation example. Okay, so you have to just do greater than selects and the two stigma. Yes. Okay, uh, so we just stop the skin sharing. I'm just uh, giving the concept about the package. There are four packages private, uh, public, access specific directory. Public, private, protected, and default. There are four access specified in Java public, private, protected, and default. <laughs> I have one example. What is public? Public is it will be accessible everywhere. Is the private? Okay. Suppose I am creating the two package, package A and package B, and inside the package I am creating one class that is training A dot Java, and package B I have created, uh, created another class that is training B dot. First of all, I am going to training A dot Java. Training A is the class name, public word sum inside the sum method, main method inside class A, <coughs> and the training A is new training. And this is a simple code I am taking. Now come to training B. Yeah, now come to training B. In training B, training B extends training A. Void sum one. It is the sum and it is sum. Inside sum one method, the same thing actually. Same whatever I have written here, I am written also here. Mm -hmm. So that if I run the program training A, inside class A, inside uh, sum method. If I also uh, run the training B, inside some of the some of so both the both the uh, running. <laughs> yeah, extends. It, this is the public. That's why we are using the public access specifier. So all the training B, all the training A extends and then come to the training B. But if I just do the private. See, now the error will come. What is the error? Import. Change visibility. Change visibility of a training to public. The compiler give me this one warning. And what is the warning? And warning is change visibility to public. Because if you don't give this public, then it is a private actually. It cannot go to here. It is only bound here. It cannot go to okay. training B. If only we can, this is the private access specifier, we can private this. Private means or private means some restriction will pop up. Yeah. And now if we give uh, public, public means what? It's access in every class. Mm -hmm. That the error will go on and uh, it will run again. The program is running fine. So that is the public and private example. And it is a default. Default means what? Default access specifier means suppose if you don't give anything. Suppose if you don't give anything. So that also the see it, it, it is also change visibility of pub. They are also mm. showing the same message. If you don't give anything, then it is a default. It is mentioned the default. Don't give anything. 
what if you give parking? So this is the whole access this is public, private, protected and actually protected is not uh, usable in, in the project. That's why protected is not the very useful thing. But public, private and default. These are the three of the this is the this is the logic yeah. Okay, now come to okay. Let's start one example of exception. After that, we are in the next step. We are completing the exception and collection framework. That's the two remaining topic. Uh, that is exception and another uh, is what is and there is uh, collection. collection framework. These are the two remaining topics <laughs> in the Java. So let's uh, little bit start exception. Just do one example today. Okay, what is exception? First of all, yeah, tell me what is exception? Uh, exception, uh, it's like an error, right? Like yeah, syntax error. Is a one kind of error. <laughs> Any kind of error is not called an exception. It may be array index bound exception. It may be class not found exception. Mm -hmm. There are different, different exceptions that if we do a wrong code, they need to show the error, and that is the exception. And how we handle the exception, that's called exception handling. We can handle the exception that we know already we are using in JavaScript also. We are try and catch. Okay. Try and catch and finally block us. Finally block is mainly used for <clears throat> the conditional purpose, but stricting purpose, but in the try block, what will happen? In the try block, we will put the exception, the wrong code, and in the catch block, we will handle the exception. There are so many different, different exceptions, class not found exception, input output IO exception, SQL exception, remote exception, array index upper bound exception, null method, null pointer, null method pointer exception. <laughs> Okay, so there are two types of exception, check exception, unchecked exception. And these are two types of exception, check and unchecked exception. Okay, and try, we are using try and catch block and finally block. And we are also using throw and throws. So we come later, so what is throw and throws in the next step? Uh, right now, today we are just using the try and catch block. That this is the last example. Yeah, so we share a screen. And...
just just line number 17 you will just see uh, in line number 17 yeah. in line number 17 that is just just write exception or arithmetic exception you can write yeah just write arithmetic exception Arithmetic exception already. Oh, oh, okay. It will be also there. So, the left exception. It will show some error. That is one. You can also do uh, exception. It is not mentioned. Huh? Okay, block, block one, catch block. Just comment on catch block. No, just uh, comment out the comment the catch block. Uh, from line number the... 17 to 20. 17 to 20. Yeah, line 17 to 20. I think it will be missing as Star slash right. Uh, yeah, now seven. Yeah. In the tribal, we are just using the wrong code. A10 B0 because 10 divided by 0 is nothing actually, right? 10 divided by 0 is nothing, so it is the wrong code actually. And in the catch block, we are using the arithmetic exception, program runs properly. Okay. In the catch block, we are handling the exception, handling the wrong code. Actually. And that is okay, finally done. Just give uh, in line number 23, give now arithmetic exception. <laughs> Yeah, now it is stopped. Now uncomment the catch block. See why it is not why it is giving error actually I can understand. That. Giving error. I think there are two catch. That's right. No, actually, no. Actually, uh, two catch block is happened. In one catch, one tribal block, and there are multiple catch block. That will happen. But here, why the error is happening, I not understand actually. Just, okay, just wait one minute. Just stop the skin share. I am share this because I have also that exam. Okay, that is the same example that already. Okay, just write here already want example. So and then already okay, want example. Yeah, there are different uh, exception. Just this. yeah, program runs properly. Already brown bound exception, right? Yeah, already uh, already bound exception. No, it's showing error. Showing error. Uh, let's just let me save it. Uh, mm -hmm. Array yeah. bound exception cannot be a result. Cannot be resolved to a type. Okay, you have to. Okay, okay, you have to import. You have to import. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. You have to import. Yeah, uh, you can share the screen. Yeah, now. Uh, Yeah, now I'm not okay. okay, so this is the try catch and finally block. And always remember 
interviewer will ask you inside one child block, can there will be multiple catch block? Then you can say yes. There are different different uh, exception happen. The first exception is already about exception. There is one type of exception, and then another exception is arithmetic exception. Okay. There are and another catch block will be happening. There may be null content exception, maybe another exception. Mm -hmm. Okay, so today after this, and then we will uh, next day we will just end the Java with the correction came up. Yes. Just make GPL and send the